So one of the most common questions we get asked at the Adaptable Blotter team is whether it's possible to perform a two-stage searching and filtering operation, by which I mean, let's imagine um, a client has a particularly large data set, so he might want to first filter that data on the server and then return a reduced data set to the client where users can then use our searching and filtering functions to filter and search that data um, again on the second pass. And the answer is yes, we do allow server searching and filtering. And we do it through this new data source function here. And the way it works is you provide the adaptable blotter with data sources. So in this example here, it's been provided with dollar, euro and sterling. And each time one is selected, a different data set is returned to the adaptable blotter. So if I click dollar, you can see I'm only seeing currencies where it's dollar. If I click euro, I'm only seeing currencies where it's euro. And if I click sterling, I'm only seeing currencies where it's sterling. And you'll also notice that the columns and the sort is changing each time because we have different layouts applied. So for sterling, we have a sterling view. For dollar, we have a dollar view. And for euro, we have a euro view. So what's happening here? Um, so let's have a look at the code to see what we've done. And when you um, set up the adaptable blotter, one of the things you do is you provide it with some JSON, which is a set of instructions which tells the adaptable blotter um, some predefined objects that you want. And if we have a look at our JSON, we can see we've got a section here called data source. And in that section, we've provided it with three sources, dollar, euro, and sterling. And we've also said which the startup data source should be dollar. And all the adaptable blotter is now doing is when any of those data sources are applied, it's merely sending an event to say this is the new data source, and it's the responsibility of the client to listen to that event and provide it with new data. So how do we do that? So if we have a look at this function here, which is called get trade for search, we're listening to some search arguments. We'll look at what those are in a minute. And we've basically said if it's dollar, then well, there's two methods here, which are on the blotter API. We're setting the set data source, which gives it a data, as you can imagine. And we're also using the set layout function to say which layout should be um, accommodated. So if it's dollar, we're providing it with um, some data. This is just dummy data, but of course, this could be a store procedure name. It could be anything you want on your server. You simply provide the blotter with the data you want. And then additionally, you can change the layout. Um, and then users themselves can then do subsequent searches. So if I now want to say build um, an advanced search, so let's say I can go to the notional column and I can say I only want to see um, where it's those, let's call that big notional. So that's my search, big notional, where notional is those, finish. And now you can see I'm only returning those. Um, and that will apply for all of them. So if I actually put big notional back on and I now go to dollar, you can see I'm only getting a single one because there's only one that matches. And if I do sterling again, I'm only getting it. So that's the most basic example. But what happens in fact, if you not only want to um, manage the data source on the server, but in fact, you also want to do advanced searches, not many, but some of our users prefer to perform the advanced search and in fact quick search and all the other typical um, searching and filtering that we offer on the server as well. And if, that ha if you want to do that, that's also um, allowed. And the way you do that is through this property here called the server search option. When you set up your blotter, by default it's set to none, but if you want, you can set it to advanced search, which means whenever an advanced search happens, the blotter won't perform it, but it will tell you what the search is and it will allow you to do it yourself. Or you can do all search, which means that you don't, the blotter won't just um, prevent advanced search from happening, but also prevent all filtering or quick search. Or in fact, you can choose to do search and sort. And then what happens? Well, let's put a breakpoint um, here where the arguments happen. And then if we go back to the adaptable blotter, and in fact, we now say do a quick search on JA. You can see these search chain, these search arguments, and we have a thing called a search tr change trigger. So that tells you what the thing which caused it to happen is. So in this case, the action that caused it was a quick search. And we also can see the state. So you can see what the advanced search is. The current advanced search is called big notional. That's what we applied. You can see what the 
data sources, it's Sterling. And you can also see what the quick search is, it's JA. And then if you want to, well, if you've chosen to do that, then the blotter won't perform those searches. And instead, you will have to look at these arguments, perform it yourself, and then, as before, you provide the adaptable blotter with whichever data you need. So that's um, um, to how you perform server searching, server filtering. As I say, you can choose just to use the data source, in which case you provide the adaptable blotter with a data set each time this changes, and users can then perform advanced search, quick search, and all column filtering locally. Or you can say you want to perform all searching on the server. The adaptable blotter won't do anything, but it will provide you with this very powerful event which tells you everything you need to know in order to do the search yourself. So that's server searching. Thanks for watching. Any questions, or if you want to know more, please get in touch. Many thanks.